Hi there, and welcome to today's Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at an artist called Brian Kidwell, or Brandon Kidwell, sorry, and his amazing double exposure pictures. You can see here it's a surreal hand mixed in with a head. Okay, this is an example of the artist's work that we're looking at. So you can see there's a variety of double exposures, but in particular we're looking at this sort of image here, where he's blended a hand and a face together to create these really cool effects. Okay, so if you want to do the artist research on Brandon Kidwell, that's fantastic. And I'll show you how to do your own response. So what you will see here, we've got two layers. We've got a layer with the hand on it, a layer with the face on it, and I've got a gradient background to add some depth to the image. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is head over to our photograph. So this is a picture of me I've just taken. Um, you see I look quite startled in it because I think that would work well with the hand. Then we need to add the other layer. So we're going to go to File and Place Embedded. We're going to go into our YouTube video section, find the hand for the head, and place that on top. And you can see already we've got the hand. Press Enter so that it is placed. You see this little square here? We're going to rasterize the layer so we can then edit it. We will need to get rid of all the white bits on it. And to do that, we're going to use Subject Select. So select Subject, wait for the flashing line to appear around the object. And it's always good when you're doing these photographs to have a plain background. I've just done this in front of a white sheet. Once we have done that, we are going to then use the layer mask by clicking on the button down here that says Add Layer Mask. That will then mask out all the white and just leave the hand quite straightforward we can then manipulate the hand to wherever we want to put it in our image we might also want to make it a bit bigger so that it fits better with the size of our face and our head so you can see on this one I've managed to arrange it in such a way that it fits really nicely so we're going to move it up here maybe make it a little bit smaller so it fits in the frame really nicely. Once we're happy with its arrangement and place, I'm going to make it a tiny bit bigger again. See, I'm collecting it in the corners. Once we're happy with it, we will then change the opacity of it slightly so we can see where the face is underneath. So we made it like a bit of tracing paper so we can then get it lined up exactly how we want it, like so. Next, we're going to need to do a similar thing to the layer with the face on it. We need to select the subject. Once we've done that, we're going to add a layer mask to that as well. And you can see we've then got the checkerboard background. We'll add the background in first, and then we'll do the edit. So we click the Add New Layer button. We place that at the bottom of the pile. I've selected some colors that I think work really well with it. And to do that, I've used the eyedropper. And I've chosen the color for my hair. And I've chosen the color from my skin. So you can see we've got these two colors here. Then I'm going to use the gradient tool, which is behind here. And I'm going to draw a gradient across to create the gradient background for my image. So you can see I've got the gradient going on behind it. Next, I need to then think about whether I need to make any adjustments to my brightness and contrast levels. So I go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast, and I experiment with my contrast and brightness to see if I need to change it slightly. Not too much on this one, and the same on the hand layer. Image, Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast. Let's get a little bit more contrast. Click OK, and now this is where the fun bit becomes. I need to remove the pieces of the hand where I don't want them on the face. And I think actually I'm going to make it ever so slightly bigger still. So I'm going to the Move tool, stretch it over a bit, and down a bit, and up a bit, like so. Then all I need to do is go to my layer mask here, click on it. So I'm selected the layer that is masked. Go over, make sure I've got black selected. If I don't, I click on these symbols here. Move it around so I've got the black, get the paintbrush, 
make sure I have got a fairly large but not huge and a soft round edge so it blends nicely. And then I'm going to mask out bits of the hand where the eyes are and the nose is and my face is like so and where the other eye is like that and then when I change the opacity back to fully opaque so on 100% I can see exactly where I've got this now I don't think the eyebrow quite works there so what I'm going to do is go back, switch over to white, and then mask in some of the hand back again. And the same with around here. I'm not sure if that works. So I'm going to go back and switch it over again, and then blend that in a bit here. So what we want is it to look like it is all part of the face. So subtle blends around here. To create that effect. Now, that I need to lose that bit here, don't we? Maybe a bit more here. So we want the skin to look like it is blended from one image to the other. Now we could take this a step further. We could start to blend out the head. So on this layer, we could blend out the head so that there's nothing here apart from the hands, and we could. Blend that, that so it's just the hand and the face. Whichever you prefer, really. So you can experiment with adding more layer masks here, or if you prefer it like that, without it, you could keep it like that. It's a question of what you feel works best for you. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed watching today's tutorial, looking at Brandon Kidwell. Obviously, if you have, you can research some more of his work. It's all double exposure. There's some really lovely ones where he's put trees, etc. There's ones where he's even looked at smoke. You might have seen my um, smoke tutorial I did recently. That's a good example of that technique here. So on my channel, if you are looking for some more of my tutorials, you go to the playlists, look for the Photoshop playlist. Scroll down, you can see I've done similar ones before, and the one I'm referring to at the moment is the smoke effect one, which is down here. And you can see it's a similar effect using half face and half smoke. And hopefully you've enjoyed watching today's video. If you have, feel free to leave some comments below to say what you have done yourself, maybe put some examples of your work to share with the group. And Obviously, it goes without saying, we're celebrating the 2K subscribers. If you're one of them, thank you very much. And if not, feel free to hit that subscribe button and tick the notification bell to be notified when I make new videos. Okay, thanks for watching, and have a really lovely evening. Okay, and goodbye.